Hello. Welcome, everybody. We're going to be using Slido, as you can see. Um, so please um, go ahead and uh, get that opened up. You, and if you are on your mobile phone, um, you can go ahead and scan that QR code. Um, otherwise, we have an embedded app open uh, for Slido, so you can participate right inside of the client. So yeah, this is the ever important question. If you could be any animal, what would you be? I already have some very nice results here. A lot of giraffes. I anticipated that. But Mythosaur, I was not anticipating that. I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna say my dog. He seems to have the life. <laughs> We got some Mandalorian fans over here. Yeah. <laughs> honey badger. Yeah. You know, use some honey badgers. Border collie. That will wear you out. Liger. <laughs> Bread for its skills and magic. Awesome stuff. All right. Well, I think that's good. Switch over to the presentation here. I think that's what we're all really here for. Uh, welcome, everybody, to uh, the WebEx Calling Provisioning API Overview. Um, my name is Phil Belanti. Um, I'm with the WebEx Developer Evangelist team. Um, but presenting most of this uh, presentation is going to be Alec Walker. Uh, he is uh, with the WebEx Calling team. Uh, Alec, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, Phil. Hi, everyone. Uh, super excited to be here. And as, as Phil mentioned, I'm on the product management team uh, for WebEx Calling and uh, got some exciting announcements of uh, recent updates just in the last couple of days on WebEx Calling APIs. And I'll talk a little bit about that and the direction of where we're going. Great. Thanks, Alec. And uh, so but for today's webinar, we're first going to start out with some just quick news and updates for WebEx developers. Um, it's not going to be pertaining to WebEx calling. I'm going to save all of that goodness uh, for Alex's uh, section. And uh, then uh, I'm going to bring in uh, my colleague, uh, Joe Zanini, uh, who is going to be talking with one of our great partners called Flexcom. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, and then we'll, we'll bring it back over to Alec, uh, who will give us the uh, you know, overview of provisioning uh, the APIs for WebEx calling. Uh, show us a little demo on how that works, and then we'll tell you about some resources so you can learn more and get started. And hopefully uh, we'll have some time at the end for questions. Uh, so firstly, uh, let's start out with some news. Um, so outside of the WebEx calling updates that we're going to share with you today, we have a few uh, recent content updates and announcements for WebEx developers. Uh, our first one um, is the WebRTC story, you know, an introduction to WebRTC. Uh, this is an important part of many WebEx integrations and really countless other apps. So in a, in a new blog post, uh, WebEx software engineer uh, Kasava Krishnan Madhavan tells a really interesting story about WebRTC, you know, the protocol, how it conceptually works in multimedia applications. So really, this is a good read for everyone who just wants to better understand how you know WebRTC works. Uh, but next, uh, we also have uh, enhanced accessibility with WebEx buttons and cards, um, and that's for WebEx messaging. So really, accessibility is a key aspect for creating inclusive and user-friendly experiences, um, you know, particularly inside of messaging. Um, so in another new article. Uh, a software engineer, Umit Chauhan, explains recent improvements on WebEx buttons and cards uh, and how it's made it easier for bot developers to provide delightful accessibility experiences right inside these cards. Um, so this includes redesigned focus styles, uh, improved hyperlinks within those cards, and there's also more options for actionable containers. Um, and these make uh, just better chatbot interactions. Um, so definitely uh, encourage you to check out that one. You know, additionally, uh, oops, I'm sorry, I missed on that one. But additionally, uh, you know, one of the more popular uh, WebEx developer blog posts, you know, particularly for beginners or non-developers, 
Um, and this one's been recently updated here in 2023. And it's from, from zero to WebEx chatbot in 15 minutes. So uh, this is one that I actually originally authored back in 2019. Uh, so it's probably been due for some updating. Uh, but in this one, we take you step by step quickly, quickly to deploy a sample messaging application for a bot uh, really within minutes. Uh, so it provides a structure for building your own customized bot uh, when you're all said and done. So, you know, lots of non-developer folks have uh, built their first, you know, messaging bot using these instructions. So if you've been ever thinking about building one, you know, this is a really good way to start hitting the ground running um, so you can build a messaging bot. And, and you can find all of those uh, at uh, developer.webex.com slash blog. Finally, uh, I think everybody should start getting ready for WebEx One 2023. Uh, this one's on October 24th to the 26th, uh, and it's going to be live at the Anaheim, California Marriott. Um, so you can join us live or virtually um, in WebEx One. It's a hybrid event, um, so you definitely don't want to miss out there, whichever way you decide to join. Uh, we're going to unveil a bunch of new innovations in hybrid work, customer experiences, um, but customers are actually going to be there to kind of share ideas, uh, collaborate on projects, um, you know, and further build out their professional networks. It's a great place to do so. Uh, WebEx One also offers a bunch of training sessions and learning tracks. Uh, so you can register today at WebExOne.com, and we hope to see you all there. Um, and see, before we uh, kick things off here, um, I just wanted to kind of set the table a little bit about, uh, you know, what the WebEx calling APIs are and, you know, what they represent. So there's really three categories that represent the calling APIs that are available uh, on the platform. Uh, so it's for automating tasks before, during, and after calls are made. So, you know, before the calls are made, uh, and that's what we're going to be focusing on here today, are the provisioning APIs. You know, actions that essentially take place before any calls. You know, onboarding users and devices and configuring these locations, uh, automating things that admins do in Control Hub, you know, for calling, you know, particularly, you know, bulk tests. Uh, you probably would have to hire a team of people just to do provisioning one at a time in Control Hub if you're going to do that. So, you know, these APIs really make life easier. And then during the call, we have call control APIs. Um, you know, and these are for user-based actions. So, so not outside of administration. Um, for user-based actions and getting information during calls. Um, so, you know, these are all things that are done from the end user perspective, uh, automating those things. Uh, and then after the calls are made, uh, the reporting analytics APIs provides call data uh, for administrators to generate reports. Um, there's been a lot of recent updates for these APIs as well. Uh, call detail records now available five minutes after calls are completed. Um, so there's been a lot of uh, really nice improvements made there. Uh, but again, um, today, uh, our, the focus of this uh, webinar is going to be the provisioning APIs, which you know I think has been probably seen the most improvements here uh, over you know the last 18 months or so. Um, but uh, you know before we we'll, we'll start talking about those APIs, uh, I want to go ahead and kick it over to uh, my colleague Joe Zanini, um, who is going to be talking with one of our partners. Joe. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, I had the pleasure recently of working with uh, Mike Plessit and team over at Flexcom, and uh, we've invited him here today to talk about uh, uh, Flexcom and about the integration that they built with WebEx. Uh, Mike? Thanks, Joe. Thanks for the opportunity here as well. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Mike Plessit. I'm based in the UK. I'm country manager uh, for Flexcom. We, uh, we're a company that's been around uh, since 2004. Uh, we're headquartered in Luxembourg, and um, the, the whole idea, like like many other software companies, is we're trying to spread and get as many customers and partners working with our technology as possible. So, uh, thanks for, again for the opportunity there. Um, Agile, Agile, or Agile Six is our main platform. Uh, this is something we spoke about to customers and partners at uh, Cisco Live, and uh, I think it was amplified in the recent um, US Cisco Live as well, which was great for us. Um, this is really a system that is used for providing provisioning, very simplified provisioning, management and analysis of Cisco and Microsoft 
UCC environments. And our system operates in a cloud or it operates on premise. Uh, it's quite, quite flexible. Um, it's a multi-tenant platform as well. So it's ideal for uh, partners to um, provide new UC services. That's where, where we're pushing at the moment. And also for customers to provide um, you know, site to site administration and delegate delegation as well, site to site as well. It's something that Microsoft themselves can't do. So they're very interested in our technology as well. Um, the, uh, the whole goal of this is to minimize human error you know, uh, by, by using as much automation as possible. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about APIs in a second with Joe there, but we, we, we use all the APIs we can possibly get from both Cisco, Microsoft, and, and any other partner that we would like to work with as well uh, from, from a software perspective. Um, the, one of the key things I just wanted to point out about this is the fact that the human, the, 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 the human error elimination and the, the um, automation process inside the app provides a time saving of 85%, we reckon. Uh, we get this feedback from several customers now, so it's quite a key point, uh, rather than trying to do everything manually. And the um, the other thing is the analytics that we provide as well are, are, are set up so that you can actually save about 30% of your business costs as well. So there's a lot of customers we have are really pleased with the fact that they can keep their communication uh, bills as low as possible as well. Um, one key point I'd like to say, it's a quite, a quite a unique point, I think, for this project, is we've got a homogenous numbering plan system. So that you, whether you're using Cisco or Microsoft, you can have phones on your telephony network that, that go right across the two, 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 two vendors' technologies, right? So you, you can't have the same the same phone on, 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 on Cisco or Microsoft. You can just have a homogenous plan where you go from one to 100 in terms of your telephone numbers. That's quite cool. I think we get that good feedback from people as well. Um, could you switch, switch to the next slide, please? Now, this one, this is this is something that um, uh, I, I show to a lot of technical people. This is where our Agile server sits in the middle of all the different types of servers you can get from both Cisco, WebEx, or uh, Microsoft. And we also interface with third parties as well. We've got a lot of people using SAP and ServiceNow, for example. So they, they've managed to integrate uh, our, our product and connect to our product as well. Uh, so we can inter you know, integrate the two things together. Uh, but we use um, uh, all, all the different protocols from Cisco, um, SAOP, uh, REST services, a and the APIs from both Cisco and Microsoft to actually uh, integrate to it. And this 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 provides a you know a great a great service to both customers and partners using this as well and selling this. Uh, it gives a good story in terms of um, you know how how you can use our app uh, to, to to really create new business opportunities or to make your life in the uh, in the environment the customer environment easier. Um, Joe, I, I, that, I, there's a lot more to cover, but I'll, um, I think that's enough for now as an overview, if that's okay. Sure, sure. Thank you for that. Um, so, we, you know, our audience is, is developer-centric, and, and a lot of us are interested in the APIs. What was uh, uh, your team's feedback on working with the WebEx uh, REST APIs? Well, I, I, yeah, I spoke to the developers about this because it's quite good to get, obviously, get their feedback from a company perspective. But I, I would say from a Cisco WebEx API perspective, I'd say very well documented, easy to access was one of the key points that I got back. Um, there were very few changes that are made to the APIs, you know, and, and they're always correct as well. So it's much easier for us to get to get new software releases out there, which is which is what our, our uh, customer base are looking for. Very easy to access the APIs, and very stable when released, you know, so we're very pleased with what we get. I, I'd like to compare that with Microsoft Graph APIs as well, just, you know, just, to, just to side by side. Their documentation is not always up to date, so we have a lot of issues with um, with, with, with trying to understand or you know, what's new, what's not new. Uh, the APIs keep changing as well, and I hear this from many other vendors that are, that are creating software. The APIs keep changing, so that means every time the API changes, you have to keep changing your product. All right, so that's something we don't see from the Cisco side. And we'd also, so the APIs we also see as fairly unstable uh, when they're released as well. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of issues on, on the Microsoft side, I would say, Joe. That's great to hear. That's great to hear that we're staying on top of it. Can I talk uh, about the sandbox? Can I just talk about the sandbox? Or what you yeah, yeah. Much? What was your experience with the WebEx sandbox as well? Yeah, on the sandbox, you know, again, um, when you obviously when you're developing products there, if you've got the opportunity to, you know, test things out and, and try things, you know, the sandbox is absolutely wonderful. So the, the, the Cisco sandbox, um, it, absolutely fantastic for, for 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 creating both the all the Cisco UC. Uh, technology support, WebEx support, like you know, the, the, 
the um we've re we, we basically relied on that since 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 uh, we we created the company so in, over, over the last period of years and one of the first times we used it was when the spark cisco spark come out um very very useful for that i would say joe from a microsoft perspective you know everything's there again you know and it's very easy to to, to create things like microsoft teams calling so but so all in all um it, we we have to keep this sandbox going if you can and uh, it, it helps us and, and i'm sure other vendors as well to to make life easier sure sure well if you have any problems with the sandbox don't hesitate to reach out to me no uh, problem. <laughs> and, and, and flexcom is listed on on the webex app hub um, can you talk a little bit about the process of, of getting listed on the app hub what was your experience like there yeah, we, well, we, we, we noticed this at a Cisco live show, the app, the app hub uh, service, so we wanted to be part of it. Um, I would say that the submission and uh, review process was really easy. You know, uh, you, you provided Joe fantastic support. You know, I was very, very happy with what you did there and it made life a lot easier to actually get all this implemented. Um, but the, the one thing that I would feedback is, you know, there is a button on there, uh, which if you click on it, it deletes everything you've put on there. So you have to be yeah. very, very careful, you don't press it. <laughs> Um, but apart from that, absolutely fantastic. You know, it's, uh, it, it's something that we, we, we really do need and it helps us, you know, push our product out there and, uh, other, 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 you know, other customers can actually see what we've got. It's another opportunity to market ourselves as well. So very happy with that, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. And for everybody watching, that's the save button on the final, uh, WebEx submission <laughs> form there. If you have that's an issue with that, reach out to me. We'll work together on that. Uh, my, my, my WebEx messaging is probably going to blow up here soon. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you so much, Mike, for, for taking the time. You're to talk welcome. To thank you very much. Uh, we're going to get into the meat of the webinar here. Alec, over to you. Hey, thanks, Joe. Um, and, and thanks, Mike. Actually, uh, Mike, that's, a, that's music to my ears that, uh, that it was, it, the documentation was clean and it was easy to use. Um, I know sometimes there is challenges. There's always challenges with APIs and changes coming out. I'm glad to hear that it's gone gone well for you, Mike. Uh, and I think we're we're making strides to make it even more easy, which is um, some of what we're going to talk about today. Um, and by the way, um, I know Mike. We you know before the call here, he was sharing you know some good things and some bad things um, with his experience. And and I'll just share that I think. Um, you know, I have an ear for both, and I, I do love to hear the challenges too, because that's how we get better. Um, but thanks, thanks for the uh, the overview, Mike. That was great and and good validation of I think where we're at. You're welcome. Um, okay, so hey, uh, again, just introducing myself. I'm Alec. I'm on the uh, product management team for WebEx Calling, and um, I have a a focus of provisioning in general, which includes uh, Control Hub, CSV, and API. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about APIs. It is an area that I'm I'm pretty passionate about uh, as a product manager. Um, and I think we've done a lot of exciting things that I, I wanna share with today. And and uh, and I'm actually gonna try and do a demo as well. So uh, Phil, can we go to the next slide? Okay, so I, I like kind of just top down when we talk about provisioning, um, uh, there's multiple options for provisioning. You know, Mike's organization, Mike that just spoke there, talked about uh, their tool that actually does provisioning. We have three things that come with uh, your WebEx offer or WebEx calling if you're if you are, are licensing WebEx calling or the WebEx suite. Uh, you can obviously do things through Control Hub, CSV, and API. Um, and and based on your use case, and sometimes based on the customer you're working with um, or the partner you are, uh, th there's different ways of doing things. Um, I like the little uh, kind of Harvey Ballish type uh, thing here. Ease of use. Control Hub is obviously going to be the easiest thing to do. I'm going to show you some of Control Hub, and that's how you can provision things. Um, but you know, Mike just mentioned uh, about like taking time, 85% you know time improvement. Uh, it is very slow to provision things in Control Hub, and customization. There's absolutely no customization. Um, the Control Hub experience is we want to make it simple and easy. But if you're doing more complex cases, it's not going to be the tool for you. Uh, CSV is is very popular because it's easy to adopt. Uh, it is very fast. Um, and, uh, but it, it has a little bit of customization, um, but, but not, not much. Um, and from an investment perspective, we're all in on control hub. Every feature that we do, uh, for WebEx calling that you need to provision will be accessible in control hub. Um, but that's not going to be the case with CSV. 
our target for CSV is roughly 40% of the, the feature set. Uh, and it, it really is, and that's in part just because at some point the investment doesn't make sense for us. Uh, the CSVs are intended to be for the majority of our customers. 90% of our customers use 40% of the functionality, so we want to target them. Um, but that's clearly uh, limits the customization that you can do. Uh, but it is an effective option. The far right-hand side, uh, you see a bunch of pluses over there. Uh, there is no doubt uh, speed. If you want to do things over 100, 1,000, or even tens of thousands of records, uh, you can use APIs. Customization, uh, this is the lowest, most granular way we can do provisioning, uh, so there's maximum customization. Ease of use, um, I did put a plus, like one plus in there, because um, uh, you do have to be a developer to access it. Uh, but really, our focus is let's let's add another plus. <laughs> let's add two more pluses there. Um, really, our goal uh, over fiscal year 2024, which is starting up uh, next month, uh, is to make the APIs as accessible and easy to use as possible. So we want to have more transparency of our roadmap, uh, more documentation that makes sense for developers, and uh, better tools, especially things in like sandboxes. And I'll, I'll talk about some of that in a little bit. So let's go to the next slide and we'll we'll dive in a little bit more on APIs. Okay, this is the, the filler slide. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much to the text here, but we all know what an API is. Um, and I think the three bullets are the key focus point, you know, enabler for open systems integration, universally available, unleashes developer innovation. And I do wanna talk on that third point. That is key to WebEx success, and we know that. Um, I like to think of, uh, we're providing, you know, verbs and nouns and adjectives and adverbs uh, with our APIs. But ultimately, the sentences that are built, the stories that are written, those are going to come from you, our ecosystem and developer partners that are going out there and doing things and taking our product in ways we don't even envision today. Um, when you go to Control Hub, there's a very templated experience of how we put things together. It's meant to scale. It's meant to scale to the way that we think our customers want their business to work. Uh, but we are really looking for our third party partners like you to go out there and do the crazy to do the innovative stuff um, with the, the lowest level tools available. So, from my perspective, I love hearing stories um, of innovation and doing the using the tools in ways that we can't even envision today. So, next slide, please. Uh, okay. Um, one change, and I'm going to show you some of the changes at developer.webex.com, um, and I'm, hopefully most of you have seen developer.webex.com, uh, is we sort of carved out uh, a separate section within developer.webex.com specific to Webex calling. Um, and I, I think we've suffered in part because we've had a confusing message. All our APIs have been under calling, um, but there are three distinct products. There are actually potentially more because calling is always a growing we have lots of uh, offers under our calling, uh, but the flagship product is really WebEx calling. Um, and I'll talk just briefly, you know, WebEx UCM, WebEx for Broadworks, what are these? Um, these are not licensed WebEx calling offers. These are a WebEx experience that sits on top of an on-prem deployment in the case of UCM or a partner-led cloud deployment in terms of Broadworks. We have great APIs, we have great offers there. Great things you can do with the WebEx for UCM and WebEx for Broadworks, which includes hybrid deployments. So you can do things like some of your deployments can be on WebEx calling and some on-prem with UCM and some in our partner cloud on Broadworks. Uh, so there's lots of flexibility how we deploy things, but I wanna talk today about WebEx calling. Um, and I do wanna clarify too that there are, before we go on to the next slide, uh, two parts to WebEx calling, um, well, actually, Three, we have what we call our multi-tenant WebEx calling. This is, uh, this is our flagship product. This is where we're putting most of our innovation and where I wanna talk today. Um, but when you license WebEx calling, you do also get access to what we call WebEx calling DI, which many of you may be aware of as well. This is our cloud-based UCM deployment. DI stands for dedicated instance. Uh, so it has most of the capabilities of your WebEx calling multi-tenant offer, uh, but it is, uh, much more enterprise customizable because you get your own instance. Uh, and then the third sort of clarification is sometimes you may hear things and see APIs out there for wholesale or WebEx calling wholesale. Uh, wholesale is, um, is what we consider a route to market. Uh, it is a specific licensing model 
there are some provisioning differences between WebEx calling and WebEx calling wholesale. Uh, but I just want to clarify wholesale is a sub offer, at least from the calling perspective under WebEx calling. So when you go to developer.webex.com, you will see information about wholesale and dedicated instance under the WebEx calling umbrella, which I'll show you more about today. Okay, so feel free, Phil, let's jump to the next slide. So Phil brought this up. Um, there are sort of three buckets and all of these are accessible at developer.webex.com. Um, and the first provisioning, which I'm gonna spend most of the time on, uh, the call control, which, call, which Phil talked about, and analytics and reporting. And they do represent different portions of the customer journey. Um, and there are sample solutions down there below. And what's kind of exciting is, you know, we have ecosystem partners that are engaging on all those things at the bottom piece of it. Uh, and again, lots of innovation that comes out of it. But for today, we're gonna talk mostly about the provisioning APIs. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, I, I wanna spend some time talking about the goals uh, for for WebEx calling APIs in general and WebEx calling provisioning APIs in particular, um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to, and I, I we're not there. That's why it's got a fancy picture of a road driving off into the the horizon. Um, we want to move toward an API first product approach. Um, traditionally, what we've done often in WebEx, but certainly in WebEx calling, is we will launch a new feature, and then sometimes days later, sometimes weeks later, and unfortunately, sometimes even months later, we may launch the APIs. Um, we want to change that, and we're aiming to change that in, in the next fiscal year 2024, uh, which is we want to move to an API-first product approach. The good thing is um, everything that you can do in Control Hub is backed by a provisioning API that exists today. Uh, so everything, if you add an announcement, if you add a user, if you update call forwarding, all of those things are ultimately calling an API underneath it. Um, what we do is we take those APIs and we make them public. Um, we put the right uh, roles and access controls on top of it. We test it and we document it. That's part of the process for when we do APIs. Uh, so it's not a huge lift if it can be done in Control Hub. Uh, it can be exposed into through an API. But that, what I just described is somewhat of an API second approach. We actually want to go API first. We want to be uh, making things available via our beta program to our API developers first, and then it may be appearing in Control Hub uh, as a secondary effort, or maybe at the same time. Something we're going to be working on in fiscal year 24. Um, the second one, we want to make APIs flexible, easy to use to help drive innovation through our partners. So uh, Mike started this call saying how you know it was easy to document and there was stability with the APIs. We wanna get even better with that. We want to make these tools as easy to use as possible. So we're gonna be investing more in our beta program. We're gonna be investing more in our sandbox program, in our documentation, all of this with the goal, working very closely with you know Phil and Adam and Joe to make sure that we're getting the message out uh, to you, our partners and, and, um, and in our ecosystem partners to develop on top of it. And we wanna make it as easy as possible. Um, and that's a key goal for us uh, in the next 12 months. And then third, in this, uh, I sort of referenced this earlier, everything that you can do in Control Hub, we want to make available via APIs. Uh, so if you can do it in Control Hub, there should be an API underneath it. And when you put it into APIs, that goes to that 85% that was referenced earlier. We wanna take that human error out of things and put it into an API. Not only do you get the, the uh, quality improvements, but you get the scalability so you can do things across hundreds or thousands of records uh, with an API. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so th this is in fact a little bit dated. We're even a little better than this today, but I I, I did like this slide. I, I shamelessly stole this from uh, uh, Johannes. So I think I think he was the one, or maybe with Phil, it's your slide. Um, yeah, but this one's one from a couple of Cisco lives ago, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it, it's dated, uh, but the sentiment is still true. Uh, over the last 12 to 18 months, we have been investing significantly in our APIs. And um, uh, if you, if there's a perception that we are still on the left-hand side, um, that's fair because uh, for several months after the launch of WebEx Calling, we did not have many APIs. Uh, we recognize this and we've been doubling down on our API strategy for the last 18 months. Uh, and most of what you can do through Control Hub, and I, I'm careful to say most, <laughs> it's not all, um, 
uh, is uh, most of what you can do through Control Hub, there should be an API available today. Uh, there are some notable gaps on there. Um, for example, uh, we've got some work we still need to do on numbers and uh, number provisioning. Um, and we're uh, just about to launch, it's been in beta for several months now, uh, some device, uh, WebEx calling device uh, activations. Those are, are very close to going GA in the next week or so. Uh, and Charles Mather, who is a uh, product manager, he's on the call here. Um, he's, uh, he is going to be championing this and uh, he's been doing a great job of, of adding more and more features. And, and if time permitting, maybe he can even spend just a couple of minutes talking about the roadmap of where we're going. Uh, so next slide, please. Um, okay, I, I just want to, you know, showcase, you know, a few hero slides. I think uh, maybe it was Phil that referenced this earlier. Uh, we do have uh, reports APIs available. So this goes to the reporting side, not the provisioning side. Uh, we've launched a lot with the reports APIs. Uh, so everything that you can access in Control Hub in terms of call quality engagement, those are available via API. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the second one, though, that we're really excited about is the um, API for call history. Um, this is a customer API. We're soon to launch a partner API uh, that does very similar functionality. Uh, but this does, does near real time, I say near, uh, within five minutes uh, collection of CDRs, call data records. Um, so you can slice and dice this, and this really opens up the analytics, not just from what we can provide, uh, but analytics uh, for partners and customers that are looking to do more with their analytics than what we provide out of the box. Uh, next slide, please. I, I threw this one in here because I'm actually kind of excited about this. Uh, we launched a new feature about six weeks ago, maybe it was eight weeks ago, called the Announcement Repository. Um, if you are a retail customer uh, where you have maybe thousands of stores deployed across the country, uh, you may have thousands of auto attendants, thousands of locations, all of them with a very similar announcement, you know, welcome to Walker Pizza, please leave a message or press one to reach sales. Um, whatever that message is, uh, to previously eight weeks ago, you actually had to um, replicate that announcement a thousand times over for each uh, auto attendant. We knew this was a, a painful operation and it was also painful because there were no APIs available for it. Uh, now we are launching the announcement repository APIs, which allows you to upload one announcement uh, or even a few announcements uh, and then ha have those, th those thousand auto attendants or call queues or uh, call intercepts point to the announcement. Um, so not only does it provide the ability to assign thousands of location features, uh, but you can uh, literally manage the, the binary file, the audio file that's associated with it. So uh, it's been asked for a long time and we're just about to get that out the door. It's currently in beta, I believe. Uh, you're gonna be going GA soon. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so I started the call saying uh, I was sort of excited um, hearing about you know, the adoption of APIs and ease of use. Uh, in the last two days, we've made uh, significant updates to developer.webex.com. I'm gonna show uh, a, a look at that. It is actually GA, so if you go there now, um, if you are used to the old way and you're frustrated with the new way, uh, have some patience. Uh, I'm hopefully that this is gonna make things a lot more easy and intuitive. I get sometimes change doesn't always seem like that, uh, but we've really reorganized um, the structure of our APIs. And if you look there just on the right, and again, I'll show it in real time when we do a demo here in a couple minutes, uh, you can see that it's got things like features, auto attendant features, call park in that small picture to the right there. And uh, the idea behind this is we've restructured, and this goes to the first point, organizational structure for the API content. We've restructured our APIs to be more reflective of the experience on Control Hub. So now if you're in Control Hub and you add a user or you add a, an auto attendant, where you go for the auto attendant, the category um, and the grouping of that is more reflective of that on, on the developer.webex.com. So it's easier to find the content you're looking for. We have added a new what's new and coming soon section, uh, very specific to APIs. Uh, we're gonna, Charles, again, who's on the call here, uh, is gonna be helping to drive that. Uh, we've added in some upcoming APIs uh, and we're gonna be really populating that as we as we lock down our, our Q1, fiscal year Q1 commits. Um, so you can now go to that place and see what's recently been launched 
and what is coming soon, in addition to the change logs. Um, we are going to be uh, adding a known issues section, so that is accessible today. It's got a little bit of a coming soon uh, section on there. Uh, but as we hear from you and as we discover things ourselves, we want to track the issues. We do track the issues, but we aren't always the best at making it transparent to you, the developers, um, as to those changes. So now there's going to be a section specific to WebEx calling on known issues. The beta program uh, and the sandbox program, uh, we are not there yet. Um, we have a, well, we, the beta program is there. So you can sign up for the beta program and I'll show you where the beta program is. Uh, we do have the sandbox environment. Uh, I'll show you where that is as well. Um, we want to make those even better. Um, so we want to make it more clear how you sign up for beta. We make it, we have now made a separate section. Again, if you look really close, uh, my eyesight is pretty bad here on this picture. At the very top of that picture on the right, there's now a section called WebEx calling beta. So we pulled out the beta that is accessible just in that section. So it's it's really easy to find the things that are GA and find the things that are in beta where we're soliciting feedback. Um, and in terms of the sandbox program, uh, we are looking to add uh, PSTN as part of the sandbox. Uh, so you, the partner can have all the tools you want to go try things out. Uh, we're not there yet, but uh, that's that's what we're looking to do in the next quarter. And I, I uh, says document known issues. So I have an issue here because I said the same thing two bullets up. Uh, so ignore that. <laughs> um, but the last point there, information and SDKs and scripts. Um, we actually have several SDKs, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, SDKs meaning they are the layer that sits above, they abstract those APIs. So it makes it even easier to use and adopt via these SDKs. So those open source SDKs are accessible. Um, open source in the sense you can go in and you can tweak and use them in whatever way you want. Um, as our own deployment teams are building uh, scripts, uh, an example of that would be if I want to move a workspace from one location to another, uh, we actually have a script for that. Um, we want to post that script out there so you can use it as a sample um, and potentially use that for yourself if there's a, a particular use case for it. Uh, but we're going to be adding more and more scripts that are built on top of either the SDKs or the APIs themselves. And I've done a ton of talking here and I'm hoping we can kind of shift gears and I can do a little bit more show and tell uh, versus tell and show. So Phil, what's the next? Slide. Yeah, uh, yeah, we have, um, uh, I guess, a few slides in this demo section. Do you want to go through those slides first and then switch over to you? Yeah, uh, I'll take over. Yeah. Let's just let's go through a couple of these. Um, okay. okay, so I'm going to show a demo here, and and it goes back to that picture where I said APIs. We had one plus on there because it's not easy to use. Um, I'm hoping we can challenge that and show that we can do just very specific, uh, you know, building a full provisioning system. Uh, maybe a lot of work and there's a lot of APIs, but you can use APIs for a very specific use case. Um, and how would you get started? You know, first we go to developer.webex.com, which is where you find all the documentation, all the tools, the API documentation itself, as well as IDEs and SDKs. Access the guides to access sandboxes, view, try out, as per the, you know, the second point there. Uh, build your app through APIs, SDKs, and IDEs. And then the fourth point, you have to launch your app. There's multiple ways you can launch the app, which I'll talk to at the end, uh, but I'm going to kind of step through all four of these as we go through the demo um, and uh, and solve a, a little use case. So next slide, please, Phil. Um, I just want to mention this. Um, I shamelessly stole this slide from uh, Johannes and his Cisco Live slides. Um, the token, which you see there on the far right, the authorization bearer. It is very easy to generate. If you're um, a customer administrator or a partner administrator, you can use that token for all the scoped APIs that are on developer.webex.com. Um, so I am going to do the demo today using simple curl scripts, but I'm going to show you where we actually put the token uh, into the authorization. Um, and as per those two points there, you know, never push to GitHub, never share tokens any shape, way, shape, or form. Um, I'm going to be, I have these in a separate file. Uh, that I just generated, um, but you can use this token to, to access all your APIs, and, and that's the that's the authentication secret to all, all the REST APIs we're going to talk about. Okay, next slide. So the demo that I'm going to show you, uh, the use case here, and, and I just kind of pulled this together, uh, we have a 10-person organization uh, that are about to go on an extended break. 
Um, and how do you go in? They want to take all of their calls and forward all calls um, to the number 571-555-1212. And let's just say that's a, a voicemail and maybe it's a, a after hours auto answering system. Um, so how do we do that for 10 users? And I picked 10 just so we could, you know, in the interest of time, it could be 100, it could be 1,000. Uh, we could still get it done in a matter of minutes. Uh, so the implementation here is we're going to identify the individual actions in Control Hub, identify the matching APIs in developer.webex.com. And with the new uh, category structure in developer.webex.com, it should be easier than ever to pinpoint those APIs that we need to use, and then implement and test. In this case, on the far right hand side, we see the little green boxes. Um, what I am going to use ultimately uh, in demo here today is the, uh, the people API. Uh, and I, just a, a moment on the people API. I think everybody knows the people API is the fundamental API for all provisioning activities across WebEx, not just WebEx calling. Um, so people, I, I think people is one a, a little bit dated term. Uh, but this is really the user API. So when you're in Control Hub and you're accessing users, you're licensing users, you're accessing services to users, the first thing you're going to need is that list of users. Um, so that's what we're going to use the People API is to get all the 10 users in the organization. And then we'll find the commensurate call forwarding API um, in Control Hub first, and then map it to the API that we use. And then we'll simply loop through all 10 users and update the call forwarding, the, um, the call forwarding information. So with that, um, I think I'm going to take over share, Phil. Yep, and yep, go for it. I'm going to start by sharing my um, uh, Control Hub instance. And I just created, created this account this morning. So this is... This is rel this is relatively real because it is the um, and I I created the script to test things out this morning too so um, and hopefully everything goes well and, and looks like there's some error there which I'm gonna close that I don't know what that is but that's not relevant for our demo um, but the key thing here is uh, this is an organization I created ten users Andy Anderson Betty Botanical Cindy Costas um, ten users in the organization. And if I select, and this is this is mapping what we're seeing here to the people API, this would retrieve all the users. And uh, within the calling tab of each individual user, um, there is a section down here below that is call forwarding. And in the case, this is Andy, but all the users are the same. Call forwarding is not turned on for the individual user. So what we need to do is we've identified the actual transactions. In this case, I would come to call forwarding. And I'd select all call forwarding all, and I'd set to a number, um, but we're not going to turn that on uh, until we use it. We're going to use the APIs to turn that on for 100 users. So to do that, I go to developer.webex.com, and I go to the documentation section of developer.webex.com. Um, and I'm going to take this as an opportunity to show the uh, improvements that we've made. You know, first over here on the left hand side, you can see where it says Webex calling beta and WebEx calling. Uh, so what's nice about the beta, it's got a guide that gives an overview of how that all works. So it says, how do I sign up for it? How do I get access to the beta program? And then I see all the beta categories and underlying APIs beneath it. So you can see there's quite a few, uh, but previously we had this sort of buried into the same experience with WebEx calling. Um, and under WebEx calling now, well, before we do, You'll see there's WebEx calling for Broadworks and WebEx calling for UCM. So we've called out the non-WebEx calling uh, products uh, into their own bucket, uh, which I had mentioned earlier. Under WebEx calling, we've got an overview, which talks about how the product works. And it, I'm going to zoom back out for a second. And you can see it's got the list of all the APIs. We're going to be putting real-time links in here so you can access all the APIs from here. We've got SDK and tools which I talked a little bit about, but I'll mention, uh, you know, we've got Python scripts and we've got SDK tools and a growing number uh, if, of, if there are uh, SDKs out there that we want to make accessible to the uh, development community, you can use these to go even faster to build the APIs. We're going to have a what's new, not going to have, we have a what's new. So this lists out the what's new and what's coming soon. And it's still work in progress. We're going to be adding our known issues as well. So these are all new parts to the developer.webex.com experience. Um, love to hear your feedback. 
Uh, for now, if you want to share any feedback, feel free to share that with Joe and Joe, hopefully you're going to get good feedback and not bad, but um, I'll, I'll let Joe handle the one on ones of that. Um, we do have guides and information on how to get started. But let's jump into the reference. If you remember the two things that we wanted was the users, we wanted to list the users and that's going to be found under the people API. So here's where we get the people API. So for example, if I wanted to list people, I can come here and I can see an example. I can copy the code. I can generate a curl script or whatever, my, you know, whatever my development language is, I'm going to use curl for today. Uh, I can run this. I can literally run this um, operation and I can get the list of all users in my organization. In this case, it's 10. And if you'll notice, it is using a hidden uh, bearer token. I have already taken that token and I'm going to use that in my script. Uh, I'm not going to share it for the, the larger community here because we want to keep that pretty secure. Um, but that token is this key way to get that information from my organization. So I'm going to use the people API to list all the people. And then under user call settings, consistent with our direction of what we're doing in Control Hub, you can see there is a read call forwarding and then configure call forwarding. The call forwarding configuration in particular is what we're going to focus on here uh, in the next couple minutes. And let me make sure I'm just going to check my time here. I do have time here, so I'm going to hopefully get this done. And Phil, keep me honest. You can stop me in five minutes or or tell me if I if I didn't hit the mark here. But hopefully we're going to get this demo up and running and, and show you how we can do this in five minutes. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm a, a little old school uh, in how I do things. Um, I, I used to develop a long, 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 long time ago uh, in VI um, and using Bash scripts. So I'm just going to use Bash scripts to to um, to show how this works. On the right hand side, where it's a little this elongated view, is where I'm going to show the code view. Then on the left hand side, I'm going to show the run view. So I've got a script here, and you can see it's very simple. I have a generic get request, so it doesn't know what the URL is. Um, I can pass in the URL and it'll do a get. And then I have a put request, which is a, uh, an, a rest request, which updates. It does not create, it does not read, but it does the update. So that's, that's what that request is. And I can generically pass in a URL for that, as well as a JSON um, payload, so I can uh, configure my, my update. And then the first line here is a get request, and it's simply calling the people API. So over on this side over here, I'm going to run this. And you can see there's lots and lots of text. This is the JSON. This is the same thing that you're seeing on the, uh, the developer.webex.com, which I just showed. And I'm going to pipe that into a uh, utility program called JQ, which takes it and formats it into JSON. So all of it, it was already in JSON, but it just makes it a little bit prettier and easier to see. So that same bunch of text is now in pretty color-coded format. But I can use that same tool to get, um, to show the display name of all the users. And there's my 10 users, Andy Anderson and Betty Botanical. Um, and for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to actually get the ID. So once I'm going to use this ID to um, to populate the uh, the call control API to update the call forwarding. So I'm going to come back to my script over here on the right, and I I I'm stealing in the interest of time a JSON request which I'm going to pass into the call for, the call forwarding API which basically says, I want to turn on, I want to turn on call forwarding always. Okay, so we're gonna pass in that JSON and up here, I'm going to get the user ID. So, I'm going to comment this out and just see if this works. Oop. Okay, 
So what this is saying is it's processing, this is each of the IDs for each of the 10 users. And if you scroll down here, I'm gonna loop through and I'm processing each user. And now I'm going to put the request. I'm gonna make this call here to update the call forwarding API for each user. Now what this is doing is each individually, it's looping through each one and it's simply updating that one field um, with call forwarding. Now, if I go to my control hub and I refresh my user view, oh, and I got to reshare my, my call forwarding, my uh, control hub screen. But you can see Andy Anderson calling and call forwarding forward all calls. And you can now see that this is checked for all users in the organization. So I realize this is a rushed view of showing uh, the world of things, uh, but you know, I put this script together. I got up this morning, spent about 20 minutes putting it together and I was condensed it down here for a five minute view. But you can see if I wanted to update hundred users or a thousand users or, or more, um, I could do that in a matter of minutes um, and it's fairly easy to use. And I just picked out that forwarding all calls any number of cases you could use to update uh, your call forwarding experience. So I'll stop uh, stop sharing and Phil, why don't you go back to the slides and we'll wrap it up and I, you've got some final comments after I uh, say a few things. Yeah, let's get going there. Okay, so, so we'll go over the next slide yeah. here. Yeah, I'll just talk on this one and then, and then Phil, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Um, this is one that I'm really hoping we're going to be, you know, religious about. We're going to keep this up to date. Um, we're talking, you know, what is new. So we're going to try and be very specific when something is launched. Uh, there is an API change log. This is more than the API change log because this is more at a functional level. This is covering new features that come out so you're made aware of. Uh, and then it's got the coming soon so you can go to the API. We usually keep the coming soon up to date um, for uh, an upcoming quarter. So usually three, maybe four months out. Um, and uh, Charles will be managing that. Uh, and then the last part that we're, we're I, I want to say, excited about is uh, we really want to make it be as transparent as possible. So as you identify issues, as we identify issues, until we get a resolution, we're going to be uh, keeping monitoring all of that in our known issues log. And uh, so that's launched today. Uh, the content underneath, underneath it is going to take some time to get fully fleshed out. Uh, but you know, this should be one of the areas that you bookmark as you, uh, you're looking for changes on, on developer.webex.com. So I'm all done, Phil, if you want to take no, us home and then no, go to questions. Great. Um, it's really good demo. Great content, Alec. Thank you. Um, and uh, I think we, you know, made mention this a few times, but, you know, essentially when we talk about sandboxes, you know, all developers can obtain their very own WebEx organization to administer. Um, so it, it's actually a pretty generous offer. You know, you get to have, you know, t up to 10 licensed users on this, you know, WebEx organization that, that's fully licensed. So now you don't have to worry about asking your own administrator, hey, can I start building on top of our own organization or, or you know, or purchasing your own licenses? You know, these are good indefinitely. You know, so as long as you keep developing on it, you know, you can keep using the sandbox. Um, some of the improvements that we want to make is to have these maybe, you know, a, you know, easier uh, to configure for WebEx calling. Because right now, you know, the, it is a WebEx organization. It's just not configured for WebEx calling yet. Um, so these are some of the improvements we're trying to look to, you know, to, you know, to be better at. Uh, but, you know, besides that, uh, there's lots of other things you can start digging into. Uh, we have a great overview guide of all the WebEx calling APIs um, in our updated documentation. Uh, there's also a really nice Postman collection for all the calling APIs, uh, and you can find that in our uh, official WebEx GitHub repository. Um, and, you know, uh, you heard his name a few times now, our esteemed colleague Johannes uh, created a great calling SDK for Python. Uh, this SDK makes working with the API calls and webhooks events uh, much, much easier. Uh, I encourage everybody to go check that out. Um, and then uh, there's also a lot of great how-to videos available uh, on our WebEx developer vidcast collection. You know, this is where WebEx engineers 
show certain, how certain features work, you know, and help provide strategies for your integration apps. Um, but uh, there's a lot of other uh, helpful places you can uh, you can find resources for again our you know the developer.webex.com um, at Webex Devs on Twitter uh, or x.com is what it's called nowadays uh, and uh, again our official GitHub repository is GitHub.com/webex. Uh, there's also additional uh, frameworks and samples available in our curated repo uh, from our community. Uh, so this is like yeah, maintained uh, by our community uh, partners. Um, and, uh, you know, it, you know, your goal should be always to, you know, to try to get your apps ultimately listed on our WebEx app hub. And this is where you can share your applications with the, the greater uh, WebEx community, you know, potentially millions of other users uh, can find your integration in there and start using your service. Uh, uh, my colleague Joe Zanini, who was uh, interviewing uh, our partner earlier, um, he is our uh, is our guru for uh, helping out partners getting their applications listed. So ultimately, if you want to get that going, you can contact us, um, and Joe will probably be the one to help you out there. Um, and I want to do one more last slido here. Um, just to kind of wrap things up, you know, uh, what potential benefits of the provisioning APIs uh, stand out to you uh, the most for your organization? So while people are answering those, do we want to go into some of the questions we received? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So the first one that came through was last time I checked with the WX ADM library, there wasn't a method to add a phone number to a new user. So provisioning a user in control hub with calling licenses would not work. Has this changed? So I, I, I can't speak to the SDK limitations and that's probably got to be Hannes that would um Johannes that would would address that. So we can we can follow up on that question. However, from the API perspective, assignment and unassignment of numbers uh and provisioning of licenses should absolutely be available uh via the people API. So um can't speak for the SDK, but the API should definitely support that capability. Thank you. Uh, the next one was a question on the, the detailed call history API and explaining uh, what the one call per five minute rate means. I, I don't think it's, I'm not aware that it's one call per five minutes. It's, it is saying that it may take up to five minutes for the data to be propagated down and made accessible to the API. If that, if that's the question. Um, and I don't think it's a hard five minutes. I think it's as much as five minutes. So I make a phone call and then, you know, 30 seconds later, that call may not be available on the API, it, but within five minutes, it will be there. If there's other limitations around five minutes, I'm unaware of that, but I'd probably defer that to the, the analytics product manager. Let's see, we've got, um, and how many people can we update before you get a 429? Is there a specific guidance on that? I don't have a number. <laughs> I'm laughing because I don't have a number. I can make one up for. No, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, um, I do know we'll, we'll have to follow up on that. I, I will share that I think there are going to be some rate limits on specific APIs. You know, like the people API is one of our more um weighty apis it touches multiple parts of the system so that one is going to have more um more rate limits than other apis uh so it's not going to be universally if i said the number was 100 or a thousand um it, it's going to depend on the api but I, i'd probably have to follow up specifically on what the, the rate limit is if there is one on the people api yeah i know each service has its own particular rate limits depending on the the load yeah, and I think sometimes um, those numbers can be dynamic. Uh, so if there's, you know, if everybody's hammering one API, um, you know, the rate limiting might actually increase. Yeah, and you can read more about the uh, the rate limits on our API basics page uh, on the developer portal. 
All right, I think we are at time. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you everybody for joining to today's webinar um, and participating in the Slido. Um, I hope you um, you know got some good information out of this, and uh, um, you have some uh, you know actionable things you can go check out over on the developer portal and our GitHub. Um, but uh, do stay tuned. We're going to be having uh, more webinars uh, coming up next month. Um, so uh, you can always check back to our webinars page. And also you can um, find the recording for this webinar uh, that will be up here uh, shortly thereafter. And with that, we thank you very much. Have a great day.